Okay, gang. So in the last video when we talked about hydration of triple bonds, right? I told you to hold off and kind of believe me that when you had something uh, like this, this functional group called an enol, that whenever you see this in your mechanism, the, uh, what happens is it's in equilibrium, right? These arrows going back and forth with its corresponding carbonyl, which in this case is a ketone. So whenever you reach this intermediate in your mechanism, this enol, it flips right to the ketone, which was your final product from when we were using mercuric sulfate in H2SO4. Okay, so I want to show you guys what this phenomenon is and actually give it a name and kind of explore it, right? So we know this is an enol because of the, uh, the double bond, right? As well as the alcohol, right? There's the en and the ol. Um, and the, the truth is when you have an enol, or more so when you have a ketone, there's this equilibrium going on. So maybe we had acetone in a flask. So the overwhelming majority of your acetone looks like this. But there's going to be a very, 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 very tiny amount that's going to look like your enol. And constantly, there's some enols flipping to ketones and a very small amount of ketones flipping to enols. It's an equilibrium, right? The forward and reverse um, are equal, right? But the equilibrium heavily favors the ketone. Okay, so I want to show you a mechanism of how you can go from here to here and here to here and why this, actually let me just show you why this is favored over this. So first let's draw some resonance, aka the answer to all your woes and problems. Okay, so let me kind of draw the resonance downward. So what I could do is for here, actually just draw the line to the hydrogen. On the enol, I can draw, I can drop these electrons down, and I can put, uh, bounce these electrons up onto carbon, right? Because if I make this double bond here, this carbon is going to break its octet rule unless I bounce the electrons up as a lone pair on the carbon down there. Lone pair down here. Okay, there's one resonance structure of the enol, and here my only resonance move, as we've seen in the past. It's just giving the pi electrons to the oxygen, right? So we can see this being the case. Okay, so if I ask you guys to evaluate which resin structure might be more favorable, it's, there's kind of a clear-cut winner, right? Oxygen over here hates this positive charge, and we know carbons with negative charges are really good nucleophiles, aka they're unstable, right? They like to react with stuff. On the other hand, yeah, I mean, we don't want to give our carbon a positive charge or a charge at all, but we know, hey, this oxygen is super okay with that negative charge. They're also next door, so there's a little bit of a stabilization force, right? So the resonance shows a favorability to the ketone, to the carbonyl, I should say. All right, and besides resonance, and this is kind of related, uh, from an enthalpy standpoint, from a from a delta H, not even a delta H, but more just an H perspective, this carbon, this carbon oxygen double bond is more stable than this carbon carbon double bond. So, from an enthalpy standpoint, that's why the ketone is favored. So, kind of like two reasons, right? The resonance tells a story, but you can also say from an enthalpy perspective, the carbon oxygen pi bond is is a greater stabilized or is a more stable bond than the carbon carbon pi bond. Okay? That's the that's kind of like the reasoning. So let me erase this. I'll show you this ketone going forwards to the enol and then I'll show you the enol unraveling back to the ketone. Okay, gang. So like I said, and I'm going to just going to painfully reiterate this. The equilibrium lies in favor of your ketone. However, I'm about to show you going from a ketone to an enol, right? So don't get confused. Just remember the ketone's favored, but I'm showing you this way, mechanistically. Your very first step is to protonate. So we're in an acidic environment, right? We see H+. We need to protonate our carbonyl oxygen, right? We saw through the resonance, right? He has a negative charge. In an acidic, in an acidic environment, he's going to love to grab H+. So let's do that. Okay. All right, so to get to our enol, right, we see we have the OH aspect, and that's good, right? 
but we need to, one, put a double bond here and remove the double bond here, right? So we actually only need one more step. And it's almost like an E2-ish type step. So right now, you have your water still. So what your water does actually, it looks next door to this carbon. It sees three hydrogens available. It only needs one of those. Water acts like a base and it grabs an H. I'm actually going to erase these ones because they're on the way. Grabs an H. The electrons from that hydrogen swing down and form the double bond we need. We're going to break the octet rule unless we do something. So we actually bounce electrons up on to oxygen. And voila! We have successfully tautomerized from our ketone to our enol. Okay? All right. So let me erase. Actually, I'll keep this up here. But that's cool with you guys. And I'll do the reverse uh, from the enol to the ketone, I should say, um, right down here. So maybe we start down here. Okay? So what we need to do now is kind of recover our ketone. We need to get rid of this H, put the double bond here, and get rid of that there. Sometimes, and you just have to think of the reverse of what you just did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just swing electrons down here and reform the double bond I know I need. That means I have to do something with this double bond or else I'm in trouble. I'll break the octet rule with this carbon. Well, this is just two electrons, right? So let me just grab H+. Positive charge on the oxygen. And the reason being, these electrons come from this carbon to bond to that hydrogen. So if I asterisk him, that's where he ended up, right there. Okay? So from here, it's just really easy. We need a water to come in to just do a cleanup step for us and get rid of the positive charge on oxygen. Okay, guys. I think you'd see... Oh, let me just finish it. I'm sure you'd see that this is really not that bad. Just remember the carbonyl form is favored over the enol form because of the enthalpy aspect, the enthalpic aspect, because the pi bond between carbon and oxygen is better than the pi bond between carbon and carbon. Tautomerization is not scary. The hardest part would be maybe spelling the word itself. All right, guys. Good job with alkyne chemistry. You are done with OCHEM 1.